In this example, we're being given y equals this equation, x over x plus 5 on all of that raised to the fourth power. And then what they want us to find is dy dx. They want us to find the derivative. So we're looking at y equals x over x plus 5 and then all of that raised to the fourth. When you go to look at this problem right now, you can kind of see that you're looking at two different derivative rules. The fraction makes you think quotient rule, and then the parentheses with the power makes you think chain rule. And so what you have to do in these situations is determine first and foremost what I refer to as the primary rule. What is the main derivative rule that's happening? And so as you look at this, you kind of say, I tell people like sort of squint your eyes and blur it a little bit and say, what does it look like the most? Does it look like I have two chunks being divided? Is that the main thing happening? If that's what's going on, then I would want to apply the quotient rule. Or instead, does the main thing look like a bunch of stuff inside of parentheses raised to a power? If that's what you're looking at, if that's the main thing, then you're looking at a chain rule. So as you squint your eyes and look at this problem, the primary rule, the main rule that we should be following on this is the chain rule. That's first and foremost what's happening. The quotient rule is inside that chain rule. It's inside those parentheses. You had to look past that fourth power in order to get to the quotient rule. So the quotient rule isn't our main rule. The chain rule is our main rule. So my saying, my recipe for the chain rule goes d in times d out. The derivative of whatever is inside those parentheses times the derivative of the outside, which is usually going to be this big power rule. So as we come to break this problem down, when I go to look at just my inside piece right now, if I said, okay, the in is x over x plus 5. Well, how do I find the derivative of that? How do I find my d in that I need to follow my chain rule? And this is where you run into your secondary rule. What you can see now is now I'm looking at two things being divided. So in order to find the derivative of this piece, I'm going to end up following that quotient rule. So my quotient rule recipe that I use goes low d high minus high d low, and all of that is over the low squared. So d high means find the derivative of the high piece. d low means find the derivative of the low piece. So when I look at this problem, I call the top piece the high piece and the bottom piece the low piece. So in this problem, my high would be x and my low would be x plus 5. The more of these you do, the easier it'll be to just kind of do this work in your head. But as you're practicing, it's good to break these out into bite-sized problems. So the high is x, the low is x plus 5. Now I need to go find the d high, the derivative of the high. To do that, that's just going to end up being our standard power rule. The power rule says bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power. So if I bring that 1 down, that gets me a 1 up in front. And technically I would get x to the 0 when I subtract 1 from the power. But we want to remind ourselves that anything to the 0 power is just 1. And so we don't need to write 1 times 1. So the derivative of x would just be 1. Come in to find the derivative of our low, our d low. Again, we're looking at just a little power rule to get through this. The derivative of x we just did on the last one, that's going to be 1. And then the derivative of 5, a constant, is always 0. So now I have what I just call my ingredients, and I'm ready to follow my quotient rule recipe. So following my quotient rule to get my d in, the rule says first go grab the low piece. So I go grab the low piece x plus 5. Then it wants me to multiply it by the d high. So then I multiply it by 1. Then I'm going to subtract from that, multiply it by the high piece, which is x. And then I have my d low, which is again going to be 1. And then all of that is over the low squared. So all over x plus 5 squared. So that's my d in. So now that I've got the d in, now I can start building back my primary rule here. I've got a piece of what I'm looking for for my chain rule. So looking at what my derivative would be, I would get dy dx equals d in. So that's what I just got out right here. I could simplify it as I come through. 1 times x plus 5 is just going to be x plus 5. 1 times x is going to be a minus x. And then that is all over x plus 5 squared. There's my dn. 
Now I need to multiply that by my d out, the derivative of the outside piece. Well, that's really just going to be a giant power rule. I'm going to bring that 4 down in front. I leave alone all the stuff I already took the derivative of. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from the power. And so that 4 becomes a 3. That's your derivative, and if you look at your answers up above, you can see that nothing up there really matches that. And that's where we kind of have to start coming through and simplifying. The rest of this is just sort of algebra manipulation. So as I build this up and simplify it down, on the top here, you can see that I've got an x minus an x. Those are going to cancel each other out. And so I've got a 5 on top that I can now multiply by this 4, which if you think about it, remember 4 is 4 over 1, so I can multiply that by my 4 there. So I'm looking at 20, and then I've got on bottom x plus 5 squared times this x over x plus 5 to the third. The next move on this is just a laws of exponents game. And so when you have a bunch of stuff raised to a power, you distribute that power into every chunk. So as we come through and distribute that through, we would get 20 times. On the top would now be x to the third. On the bottom, I still have this x plus 5 squared. And over here, as I bring it to this, this is a quantity. So that whole quantity, x plus 5, is going to be raised to the third. And now I'm just going to multiply my two fractions together. I multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So I get dy dx is going to equal 20x to the third on top. And on the bottom here, I have what are called like bases. I've got x plus 5 to the second and x plus 5 to the third. When you multiply those, you add your exponents. So in the end, I end up with x plus 5 to the fifth. And now I've simplified it down, and that is really where my final answer is going to be. And that's going to match up here with option C. So two parts of this. One is just being able to take that derivative, following your rules inside of rules. And the, the game there is always identify the primary rule first and start following that. Break that into its bite-sized chunks. The second piece of this was really just a bunch of algebra simplification that you just have to be prepared for. A little bit of laws of exponents and a little bit of multiplying of two fractions. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe. And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.